Hi, today I'm going to walk you through the cornucopia unit provided by Kansas Corn Stem. Hello, my name is Chris Remick and I am a lead teacher for Kansas Corn Stem and I'm from Garden City, Kansas. Today I'm going to go and walk through the cornucopia unit that is provided by Kansas Corn Stem. And the purpose of this activity, this is a huge monstrous unit, but the cool thing is, is we have so many small little things that introduce you to corn, um, corn production, the anatomy of corn, the structures and functions of corn, uh, math in corn, um, and all kinds of things you can think of. And the cool thing is, is you can actually pick and choose what works best for you in your classroom. Uh, you don't have to go straight on, but today we're going to go through each of these sections here. And we'll actually talk about materials uh, as we go. Because this unit is so big, we'll do it as uh, we go for each section. All right, so getting started here, we, uh, this is the cornucopia kind of built off from our kind of flagship program of Explore Corn um, back in the 1.0 days. And what I generally like to do to have uh, fun with the kids is there's just these kind of quick five questions here. Uh, you can actually do them with the PowerPoint, but notice I do have a Kahoot. Um, link right here. So this would take you to, and this is if kids have phones, they can all uh, enter a code in the phone, join in the Kahoot Lab, and you can have a big kind of Jeopardy style kind of question uh, and answer uh, things. So yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. So like I said, these are kind of just basic questions, just kind of to get that background knowledge of what ha you have with kids or what the kids have. And you'll be surprised, like some really got this and then others yeah, not sure at all, and that's why we're here actually, right? So name two of the basic types of corn, and then we can go and you can see a lot of people are gonna say popcorn or sweet corn, right? And then you might get flint corn, indent corn, flour or blue corn, and we'll look at those. How long has it been around? So like about 9,000 years back in uh, Mesoamerica and central Me uh, Mexico. Cool thing is, is so sweet corn actually has only been around since the 1700s uh, in there. So yeah, things like how many kernels are on an average year of corn? We have six to 800, okay? Um, how many corn plants can grow on an acre of land? Yeah, we can get a lot on an acre, you know, about average like 30,000. And uh, what is the majority of grown corn used for? And this kind of uh, takes people back, uh, livestock feed. So we grow a lot of our corn um, and provide it to other livestock. And then of course, you always wanna end with a joke or something. So how much does a pirate pay for an ear of corn? Well, that would be about a buccaneer. All right. Uh, and you can actually grab some of these. Like, there's all these things over the internet uh, here. So uh, I, I like to find our little corn dogs right here. So those look like happy puppies right there. All right, so here's the goals today for Cornucopia. Like I said, this is a monster of a unit. Pick and choose what you like, but really its goal is to introduce students uh, to the science of corn and agriculture, okay? We're gonna learn uh, the characteristics of the eight different types of corn. We're gonna look at um, uh, exploring an ear of corn and actually adding math to that, a good math unit with the corn. And then we're actually gonna also do a leaf color dissection in which we have a corn plant and, and dissect it and look at the growth stages within that corn plant, plus a lot, of, a lot of other stuff here. All right, so this first little sec section here is our introduction to corn. And we start with an article and those questions that we just kind of posed to the kids to get them kind of thinking actually come from this article here. So I'll kind of show this both for the camera um, picture form. So you can, uh, we have paper copies with this here. It's also in our um, Kansas corn stem. You can upload it uh, through that, the website. And I'm going to see if I can't go through here. So, all right. So what's happening here is you can see this introduction to corn article and kids can go through and they can highlight um, basically any uh, information that they think is important, right? Uh, you can have them highlight in one color a piece of information uh, that they wanna know more about, and then another color they can actually put like what's a really good fact that they came up with here. Um, and one of the things that we're looking here to get this thing started is, uh, where is corn grown, right? And why is it grown there? 
Uh, how is it grown? What are the stages that corn goes through? When can you harvest corn? What types of corn are there, right? What products are made from corn? And this article is just a quick one page article uh, being able to do that here. So um, kids can go through and again, they can see that there are about 600 kernels of corn per ear that we get approximately that 22,000 to 35,000 individual plants on an acre. Um, here's a cool thing too within the article, about 9% of all corn used to produce is only for humans, right? So looking at that, that's our cornmeal and oils, margarine, syrup, sweeteners. 64% about it goes to that feeding of livestock here. So that's really interesting. Um, yeah, a lot of really good information uh, within this article. And the cool thing is, is once they get that information read, what you can do is you can break them into groups and each group has to uh, draw um, some important facts, right? You can have five facts uh, that you pulled from the article and you're only allowed to draw them. You can't write anything. You have to represent it through pictures. And then you can go around the room and you can have each group kind of talk about pinpoint one of those uh, uh, pictures that they drew and have them explain why that was significant to them. And uh, make it a caveat where, um, you know, once a group takes that kind of piece of information, no other group can have that piece of information, right? So you get something new each time. There. So it's a really fun little activity uh, to start out with. Another fun one that we have here, let me switch over. So that article was a great introduction to corn and we have some others to build off of that. As you guys can see here, another Kahoot um, uh, with that actually uh, based on there and you can use that in the beginning. But now we go on to the brief history of corn article. And again, if we kind of look on the camera right here, we, you can print this out. And again, this is available online as a PDF. So this is kind of a very visual quick guide um, through this, uh, just, just basically the history of corn, right? Where was it produced? Um, where did it evolve from? So we know that a plant called Teosente um, is one of its earliest ancestors that uh, corn has been able to evolve from since there. And Teosente, as we'll see, it only had maybe about eight kernels. They were encased, right, with a little covering. And now we get about six to 800 kernels on our ears of corn with no coverings on them. So uh, very, very kind of cool to see the evolution or the progress of uh, the development of our corn. Right? How was it used in agriculture? The Mayans, right? Uh, they believed, according to Mayan legend, that the gods formed Mayans from dough made of corn and blood. So very kind of interesting right there. And then obviously, where does it go uh, from there uh, here? The cool thing about this article, it's a very quick read. And one neat thing I like to do is pass it off, give uh, each um, give this article to a group of like four or five kids and each kid gets a piece of that article right there and they become the experts of that article and so you give them a few minutes to read that and then they share that page with the other um, kids in their group right there. So it's kind of a nice little um, divide and conquer kind of way of reading. So yeah, that's good and actually we do have a uh, quizzes on there. So if you go to quizzes.com and click this, actually you can click this link right from here. It takes you to that brief history of corn article and you can see the questions there. You can play this together as a class, right? And the kids can kind of compete with each other uh, by getting points and things. Or you can actually even assign it as homework and kids can do it at their own pace with that. So that's really interesting and a good way of, of kind of summing up that brief history of corn. So another really cool uh, history of corn resource that we have is uh, the history of corn uh, by a TED Ed, right? It's a TED Ed video. And we turned it into an Ed Puzzle. So we upload it into Ed Puzzle and you guys can click on that link to go there. And really what it does is Ed Puzzle shows the video and the kids can watch the video and intermittently we put in questions. So the video would pause and then the kids will answer a question and it'd tell them if they got it right or wrong and then they would move on. So you can actually give that just kind of as a one-off or you can actually go to edpuzzle.com and create your own uh, classes. And through those classes, you can give kids a code and those, uh, they'll use that code to come into your classroom and you can actually see which student is doing what, how many right or wrong answers they have, or actually if they just completed it. It's really good at that. It actually says like, hey, um, Billy only completed 29% of the video. So it's a really cool resource um, for teachers using videos in the classroom, especially giving it uh, to work online, right, or remote. 
So uh, this Ed puzzle here just goes through the history. I actually kind of like that brief history of corn uh, packet we showed right here. They start out with the Mayans and the development of Teosinte into corn. Uh, here, the history of it, getting sweet corn, uh, all the products that use corn. Uh, so very good, quick uh, video um, over the overall history of corn here. So recommend that one. And then the next one, this is fun. Uh, is corn a fruit, a vegetable, or a grain? Okay, and this is a cool video clip. It's really quick um, here with um, a lady. She's actually explaining, can it be considered one or the other or all three? And that's very interesting. So what I like to do with this is pose that question to your students. Hey, is corn a fruit, a vegetable, or a grain? And have your kids kind of think about it a bit. Have like different parts of the room, right? Three different parts. Hey, uh, if you think it's a fruit, come over here. If you think it's a grain, go in the back. If you think it's a vegetable, go in the back other corner right there. Uh, discuss with your group and you'll have kids go into there. And then uh, after they kind of come up with the reason why they believe which one is which, they can actually shout out their answer, right? Uh, go to each group and have them give an answer to the class and then see if anyone kind of basically changed their mind, like, oh, I thought it was a vegetable, but I'm going for it. it's a fruit now. They made a really good argument. You can have them change with that. So it's kind of cool to see what they think it is and for giving their reasons why they think uh, corn is a fruit, vegetable, or grain. And then uh, when you sit them down and, and show the video, they make a pretty compelling uh, argument for, yeah, it can be any of them, really, depending on how you're considering it. So very cool resource there, too. Uh, I got two more really good resources on the introduction to corn. Uh, this is HHMI Biointeractive, the pop secret, uh, a little study guide kind of a thing. So Howard Hughes Medical Institute puts out these biointeractives. And this one here is actually called Pop Secret. It's about 17, eight minute, 18 minute uh, long video in which they actually go back using archeological evidence as well as genetic evidence to trace back our corn now to Teosinte back 9,000 years ago. And it's really cool to see how um, the archeological evidence and the genetic evidence actually kind of pair up and support each other with that. So really great uh, resource as well. Comes with a um, packet, um, a little worksheet with, that accompanies it. So what happens is watch the video and then actually go ahead and do that packet and it dives deeper. You do some really good genetic math based stuff um, and then some comparative like genealogy. It's really cool um, uh, resource. And then another one is just how stuff works, right? Uh, this is, I think, a 40 minute video on here. And this, everything corn on here. And to tell you the truth, this might be a good resource to maybe just show your kids one day um, to give them an overall arching kind of concept of what corn is. Again, from where it's been, how it's growing, how it's harvested, where it's used, what we can make from it. Um, if anything, though, this is a really good resource for teachers, right? If you want to kind of get a really good concept of, of, of that corn unit and stuff, I would definitely uh, put this one on your watch list uh, to be more informed. But yeah, if you have time and are able to, to show it to the class would be a good uh, thing too. So looking at this whole uh, unit right here, we see that we have some reflection uh, questions. We want kids to make sure that they know that corn was first domesticated about 9,000 years ago in Central America. Um, another name for corn is maize. And the uh, early ancestor of corn came from Teosinte. Again, just, just those six to eight kernels and covered in a case, right? Break a tooth if you were to eat it. Um, and uh, the most common type of corn is our yellow dent number two. Okay, and then just the common products that we have, um, which we'll actually get into section eight, I believe, uh, on those different types of products. So now we're in section two, right? Section two is going over the types of corn. So section one, just an introduction. This section two are the types of corn we're going out. And you have a lot of good resources. I'll kind of put these out here. <clears throat> So what we actually want to do is there are actually eight types. I know kind of showing here on the PowerPoint, we have those major four that I think people like pretty much when they hear these four, they're like, oh, yeah, I got this uh, dent, flint, popcorn, and sweet corn. But we add uh, a couple more to the list uh, right here that we'll get into. So what we would do is you can print out this bio sheet, and it looks like right here, right? We have the eight types of corn. So we have dent corn, flint, pod corn, pod, and then popcorn. Blue, uh, amylamaze, amylamaze, sweet, and flour. Um, those are the eight types that we use. And again, some are more common than others. Okay? So what is really cool is you can hand these out. right? You might, might want to cut them and make one per group. 
okay, of these eight kinds. You can have your kids then go through it. And again, you can break it up into however you want to. You can give a couple to each kid and have it go. But I would actually go give all these eight to a group, right? Um, and each kid within that group gets one or two of these. And they go through and they highlight some of the important characteristics of each of these different types of corn. And then as a group, they can compare these, uh, uh, these eight different types right here as a group. So. Um, we also make, made a Quizlet on this. So taking the information from these bio sheets right here, uh, you guys can actually have your own index cards electronically using the qu uh, Quizlet. Or you can actually do a cool little uh, class, like kind of gamifying. Uh, it's called Quizlet Live on there. And with Quizlet Live, you have groups of kids competing with each other. And the cool thing about Quizlet Live is when kids get in a group together, uh, only one kid within each group has the correct answer. So they have to work together to see who has uh, uh, the right answer with there. So it's a really good conversation and communication type uh, app to be using for our kids right there. And uh, we provide different ways of, of utilizing um, different methods of Quizlet Live right here. So you can uh, go a little further into that. Now, building off of the bio sheet, like this is the main part of our section are these bio sheets, the characteristics of each of these eight type of corn. After that, bio sheet reading, what you can have them do is you can make them do a card sort. So this card sort right here gives you your main, right? Gives you those eight kind of um, types of corn. But then it has uh, basically 50 descriptor cards, right? We pulled 50 different descriptions from all the eight. And what kids can do is they can actually put each corn type in a corner of the desk or, or on a corner of a room, each corner of the room. And what they can do is use their descript descriptor cards, right? And they would actually um, uh, go through them. And you know, also known as wild maize right here, what do we got? Uh, that's the pod right here. So they can actually put these around, um, also known as indigo, indigo corn right here. Flint, uh, so they can go around and match these descriptors with each of their types of corn. Uh, so that's really kind of cool. And you can actually gamify this as well. You can have uh, all the kids put these different types of corn uh, cards in a place on their desk, and you can time them. How quickly can they match these descriptor cards right, uh, with, with um, uh, their types of corn here. And the cool thing is, is you can go through, and you can go through and check them off, and for each wrong one, you can add like 10 seconds to their time. Uh, so that's kind of a neat one uh, there. And I have a couple other alternatives to that as well on the side. And then we also took this, okay, and we made a kernel game off of this, okay? So kernel is a knockoff of the Uno game. And what you're gonna do is you're, you're actually gonna take your descriptor cards and you will add to your descriptor cards the kernel game printouts, right? And we got the sheet on there for you. And again, this, um, the kernel like uh, PDFs on here actually has a bunch of the different eight types of corn, right? So you have actually what are called your corn type cards. Let me get those corn types out here. Nice. You have your descriptor cards that we just had from the last card sort. And then you have your action cards right here. So uh, just like Uno, what's going to happen is you guys are going to basically shuffle all these up, OK, put them in here. And you will divvy out seven of them, right? You'll give each of the kids in the group seven of these cards. And these better kind of go in there, too. I'll actually put those off to the side here for now. And then what happens is you're going to do a draw pile. So you're going to pull this open, and you're going to draw a card until you get one of the eight types of corn. OK, and your goal for this kernel uh, part right here is to get rid of those seven cards. OK, who can get rid of them the fastest, just like Uno. Um, so what happens here is when this pops up, you have sweet corn. It, you have to have a descriptor card uh, that describes sweet corn. OK, so if you have that, you can just drop it down. I'm just putting something down right there. And then you move on to the next student right here. And then that student, like, oh, oh, here's a description of sweet corn. And they put theirs down. And they keep going until you get to a person that's like, oh, I don't have something for sweet corn. So they can draw a card from the pile right here. And if they have one, if it actually has a description for sweet corn, in this case, they can uh, throw it down. If not, 
They take that card, now they have an extra card, and they move on to the next uh, uh, person there within the group. So again, your goal is to set those down and get, um, get rid of your cards as fast as possible. So we have these cool action cards right here. So we have the wild card um, in which you can actually choose. You can drop down anytime, right? Action cards can be played anytime. You drop this down onto uh, the pile, and you can choose which type of corn you want. And not only would you go, okay, we're going to talk about popcorn now, uh, put that, but now the person next to me on the left has to draw four cards and they kind of lose their turn. So you really do some damage to the person next to you. Be careful. Uh, watch your back, right? Uh, we have just one where, again, a wild card, you can place that down. The plus two, again, the person next to you that would go next would have to draw two cards and they lose their turn. You can make them skip their turn. You can reverse, so instead of going clockwise, Right, you end up going counterclockwise. So those are kind of fun little action cards to kind of uh, throw some fun into the game. Now, uh, what happens is, is let's say you got a sneaky, sneaky kid, right? And he tries to put something down a descriptor card that isn't. So we got sweet corn again, and he puts a descriptor card here, and it's maybe for dent corn. Now, if someone just play, the next person just plays off of that, he he got rid of a card, no problem, right? Uh, no harm, no foul, right? But if someone recognizes that, they can scream out kernel, and that makes us go check that. And two things can happen if someone says kernel, right? Uh, if they say kernel, and it is correct, right, that this is a descriptor for sweet corn, the person that cried out kernel actually gets penalized and has to take four cards. If this was not, if I placed a descriptor card that was not sweet corn and I got called out, then I have to draw four cards, okay? Um, so yeah, that, that can do some damage pretty quick there. So it's just kind of a fun review game on those different types of uh, corn. Okay, so I kind of just went through that right there. Um, all right, so the end of section two here, really we want to know those eight types of uh, corn, the dent, flint, pod, popcorn, flower, sweet, blue, and amylo maize. I swear I say that right in my head every time and then it doesn't go to my mouth, right? Um, so uh, the most abundant is the dent corn and then describe each uh, uh, corn type. Yeah, answers will totally vary with that. Okay. So now we're on to section three here. This section three is all about the growth and development of corn. And let me remove some of this right here. So you can start with uh, this worksheet, giving these kids kind of a discovery worksheet on the corn. Pop this out. This also, this worksheet here is really good if you need an emergency lesson plan, right? Um, or just something that kids can do on their own. So what they do is they have a link and they go to DuPont's um, corn stages and they're gonna actually go through each of the stages and label the characteristics of each stage. And, and at each stage, there are certain things. So like VE is in the vegetative stage, right? The growing stage in which we're emerging from the ground. That's what the E means. Then we have V1, 2, and 3 in which we're actually, uh, those are the amount of leaves that are coming off that have a collar on there. And then VT is like the tassel, right? We start to see the emergence of the tassel. And once we see the tassel there, we start moving into the reproductive uh, stages of the corn, right? In which the kernel is developing. Um, so what happens here is you can have one where they just write uh, the very basics of each stage of the corn plant. And then you can get a little bit more uh, detailed right here. You can have a significance. You can actually have them draw the picture of the corn plant. And we can go a little further. So this is for the vegetative states. And then in the reproductive stages, again, the significance, write down the characteristics. They can draw pictures of each stage. And then they can talk about how many growing degree units or growing degree days um, that we see these stages at. Now, um, one of the, a really good Kansas uh, corn stem program uh, uh, lab that we have is the growing degree, late, growing degree day lab in which uh, it goes over this in uh, very good detail. Um, so that would accompany this one, uh, this worksheet really well. But like I said, they don't necessarily need to have that. They can pull all that from the uh, internet resources that we give them from DuPont right here. So again, like I said, uh, the corn staging student worksheet is a very good introduction uh, activity to the corn stages and growth development, but it's also a really good web quest or uh, emergency lesson plan right there. We're kind of seeing those right here on the PowerPoint. 
Okay, so one cool thing too is you can actually develop a flipbook, right, of this. So same kind of concept. We're just kind of building off of that if you want something else to do. Um, we have a resource in which you can cut out each different stages, right? So the VE stage, the V1, all the way to uh, tasseling and the reproductive stages. And for each one of these stages, the kids can uh, write in the characteristics of that stage, okay? And then they kind of create like just a little flip book that they can go through. And <laughs> I didn't align mine too well uh, on this, but yeah, they can quickly flip through that and see the growth of the corn on the right-hand corner from that V emergence to it getting bigger and then obviously to the reproductive stages um, where we harvest the corn. Um, neat thing about this flip book, again, you, you can either do it through paper or we actually have an electronic version which you have the templates and it basically is a PowerPoint presentation with uh, the transition of the slides set at like, I think it's like 0.4 seconds. So when a, a student hits play on there, it'll actually raffle it through just like you're flipping a book here. So you'll see the corn plant going from emergence to those reproductive stages. And again, the kids can put the characteristics within each PowerPoint slide with that too. So you can either do it, yeah, uh, on paper or electronically. And what you can do from that, uh, you can use the Dup uh, DuPont resources, but Kansas State, uh, Kansas Corn, and National Corn Growers Association came out with this awesome um, poster right here that literally uh, gives you the whole like kind of spectrum of the growth of the corn plant. It goes through each stages and give the characteristics of each of those stages. So uh, if you have these, um, you can get these through coming to one of our workshops. And these, this is also found online as well that we have a link to. So you can get PDF uh, versions of these, copies of these. So we also have these in Spanish as well. So uh, a really cool resource um, that you'd be able to request from us or attend a workshop with. Um, and you can use that to uh, get the characteristics for your flipbooks. You could even use this for that uh, DuPont worksheet if you wanted as well. Okay. The other one that we see here, uh, we have the 3D corn plant paper model. We actually created a whole video on this right here of, of uh, from cutting it out using the templates, cutting out those templates, and then building your own uh, basically paper corn plant, right? Everything from the tassel to an ear of corn to the root systems um, and the leaves right here. So the cool thing is, is uh, this is called the staging version. So you can actually have your students uh, break down into groups of four or five or six, right? Different groups and give them each a different growth stage, right? So if we kind of look at our growth stage, you can have them like say, hey, this group, they're getting the VE, they're gonna get the good one, easy one, right? So you might wanna give them two of them uh, to do, all the way up to the R6, right? Where we um, actually see the harvesting of our, our dry corn right there. So um, you can give that, so you have groups doing each different stage, and then you can put those different stages around your classroom, going from the emergence to that reproductive sixth stage. So that's really kind of cool. And again, we have that video. Go to kansascornstem.com uh, for those resources here. And um, yeah, I think it'll be really fun. They turn out really nice. So going through here and reflecting on that section three, the growth development, uh, corn growth and development, uh, we want to just know that uh, kids be able to recognize each stage of the corn growing process, right? So from that emergence to the first collar, all the way to the re reproductive stages. And like I said, the reproductive stages are really cool. Um, you're looking at how that kernel of corn develops, right? We see the silking, we see the blistering and the milk and dough stages, right? And then it starts to dry and go to maturity, when, which is which, where we harvest a lot of our corn. Right? And uh, we actually harvest our, corn, our sweet corn at the milk stage, the R3 stage. And that's a pretty cool process. Actually, they'll actually show that sweet corn stage, the harvesting of that sweet corn stage in that um, uh, How Stuff Works video found in section one right there. So it's really kind of cool. You got to do it by hand. You got to do it quick. And you got to put everything on ice right there um, to, to keep the sugars from uh, your corn kernels going into starches and stuff. So pretty neat. All right, section four, moving right along. So we talked about growth stages and the development. Now let's actually talk about corn plant anatomy here. So one of the neat things that we can actually put up uh, that you can give your kids is this worksheet right here. And this worksheet, uh, you, you, get, you can 
do a couple different ones. So we have the emergence, right? This is our corn seed uh, from going and planting to seeing like the first leaf develop. And then we actually have the parts of the corn plant, a developed corn plant here. And we have different versions, right? So they can actually label the corn plant within here. You can do a matching within this. You can all, and we have different types of matching depending on how detailed you want to get with this. So there's uh, a couple different worksheets that you can give your students to go with. And we have resources to accompany that right here, in which this actually goes through each of those stages right here. And they would have to fill in the blanks right here in the descriptions. And then right here is the structures and functions of the corn plant anatomy that would go with uh, these guys right here, the, the rest of these. Now, you could just give them these readings, OK, and then have them fill out the worksheets. Or um, what you can do is. Let's see. Yes, here we go. So you can actually give them these cards, right? Um, you have these 16 different uh, cards that actually give, right, uh, the seed coat, uh, the uh, epicotyl, the silk, the husk, right, and all the descriptions with them. So you would cut crosswise, okay, and they have the descriptions, so you have these long ones, and you give each kid one of these, right? So you'll pass this out, each kid gets one of these, and you're going to have kind of uh, this get up and move around um, kind of. Uh, yeah, where you have kids get up and move around the uh, room, like, and you kind of have a, it's like a cakewalk, I guess is what I'm going with. So you put on some music, right, if you want, have them just kind of walk around and then walk around, and then you can actually say stop, or in this case, grow, right? Uh, and when you say grow, students stop, and they get the next person, that, or they get the person that's next to them, right? And uh, they actually look at what they both have, right? So they're going to compare their structure and their function. Okay, and what they're going to do is they're going to look at these structure and functions and they're going to go to their worksheet and they're going to try to figure out, hey, where is the leaf, right? Based on the function of this structure, where would that be on the corn plant, right? In this case, the leaf would be, you know, pointed right here, okay? And then the other person, uh, their little sheet of paper right here, the corn seed uh, hypocotyl, they would go through and they would actually be looking through and going through here and like, oh, maybe we think it's, you know, number five on here or something, right? You know, which is the roots. But anyway, um, so they can go through and write those down and fill out those things and give them a few minutes. And then you can say, uh, go back again. And again, they can go to another random cakewalk, play some music, have them kind of interact a bit. And then you can make them stop and grow and they get together with another uh, uh, person. And hopefully they have something different right here. And they will again use those and look for uh, these structures on their worksheet. So it's really kind of a neat, more interactive way than just kind of getting the material and filling out a worksheet with them. Uh, pretty fun, pretty easy. And uh, each time they actually make a connection right here, they can swap, right? They can swap uh, their, their little information sheets here so they get something new each time and they really start to learn uh, each of those different structures right here. Okay. So here's a, a, just a PDF of these worksheets right here that you're kind of seeing. Now, the neat thing too off of that, let's say um, you do that kind of introduction, they fill out the worksheets right here, and you want to either review. Um, we actually do have games of this right here, of these worksheets, in which we took these worksheets and we put them into purpose games. And that's a fun little website where you can create your own like mix and match games. And it times uh, the students, right? So they come in, uh, they see if you can see on my right side right here, they have to, uh, it'll give them like, where's the leaf found, right? And they have to actually touch the button uh, that leads, that points to the leaf right there, or the roots, or, um, or the ear of corn, and it times them, right? So not only does it um, uh, record like how many they got right or wrong, but it also times them as well. And, and basically what I like to do with these, you want to make sure that students just don't do it once, right? They just kind of go through and they say, hey, it's okay. Uh, what I kind of do is I try to give them a time frame to work under and say, hey, to get points for this, you have to get 100% correct in under 20 seconds or something, right? And uh, that kind of forces them to build that kind of skill of going back over and over. And you'll start to see that some kids get really competitive with it. Uh, and it, it's, it's really interesting. And actually, it does uh, keep a leaderboard within this thing. So you can actually see who got uh, the fastest on there. Um, so really fun uh, game right here, again, as a review. Okay. And then another way we can do this. So, so many ways, so many ways we can learn the corn anatomy here is an interactive notebook. 
which is right here. There we go. All right. So uh, what you want to do is you want to kind of give each uh, student like a a uh, colorful piece of paper, right? Uh, even if it's cardstock, if that works, or you can give this to their notebook. So what we have is we have those same, that same kind of uh, diagram here where they can label the structures of the corn plant. And we have also then, yep, the corn seeds right here, the emerging uh, corn plant. And then what we have is we have each structure right here, right? We have 16 different structures that we have just like we had on our little slips of paper for doing our little cakewalk kind of uh, um, fun little dance kind of a thing, right? Uh, so what you can do is you can have the kids actually write down the characteristics of each of these, okay? And then you can have them label this and paste it. I'm going to probably put it that way. <laughs> Uh, you can actually have them paste it into their notebook, and then they kind of have a little flip thing. So if they want to know what a node is, they can flip open the node, and they would see the characteristics of the node, or what the radical is, or the coleoptile. Uh, again, they would just have those written on those uh, slips of paper, which are right here. They would just write on the inside of these, and then they would paste them where they found them. And then they have a nice little interactive notebook for them to review uh, here. So that's a fun little one as well. Okay, and that's kind of just showing right here that PowerPoint. Also here with corn plant anatomy uh, pops up that uh, 3D corn uh, paper model here. So again, uh, like we did the last time, we talked about the stages of corn development where you can have a group of students each create a different stage and you can have those displayed across the room. Well, in this one, this version, uh, again, it's the same way of making the corn plant. You can determine what stage you want to do it. But um, with this, you can actually have kids write on the plant uh, what each of these uh, uh, parts of the plant are and even a description of what they do, what their function is. So you can uh, kind of incorporate that paper model into anatomy as well. Another really neat one uh, here is the corn felting activity. We have the instructions that with the 3D paper corn model, we actually have uh, instructions and a video uh, to show you uh, how to actually make these. So corn, uh, uh, the felting activity here is you just get this felt and you have a little needle that you just kind of constantly poke and prod at and you can end up shaping and forming any object you like. And uh, to tell you the truth, it's very therapeutic uh, kind of thing uh, to do, so a process to do, and you can get some really uh, artistic kids to really make some neat stuff. In this case, we would be doing like an ear of corn right here. Or if you can make someone do a corn felting corn plant, uh, that'd be pretty impressive as well. Um, and yeah, the only problem with this is again, you do have a needle and you're kind of stabbing it a lot of times. So you got to just be aware where that other hand is, right? Um, so sometimes it slips and goes on. But if you get a nice little mat uh, to put place it under, kids can just uh, be kind of poking and prodding on, uh, on top of that mat instead of on top of their hand. So that is another fun one to build kind of a, a crafty uh, corn plant. And really what we want to see here with the reflection and conclusion with the corn plant anatomy is looking at uh, those major structures within the emergent corn plant, right? Think seed and with the major other structures. So think the actual plant itself. So we want to be able to understand where those structures are and what their function is. All right. Now we've been doing a lot of describing, right, throughout the thing. Now we've got to bring some math into it, right? We've got to make it even more fun. Okay, so we have the corn kernel math um, with actually an ear of corn dissection. So in this activity here, this is where you'll need a few things, okay? You'll want to have a scale, okay? you want to have some, actually like some corn, some loose corn kernels. All right, and then uh, some ears of corn, okay? So each group can get two or three ears of corn. I mean, the more corn you have um, and the more people you have, uh, the better, right? So if you can get every uh, corn, uh, an ear of corn in every kid's hand, uh, that'd be a great. But if not, yeah, you can separate them up into groups. And what we're actually going to do with this, I'll put that worksheet up right here, is the kids are just getting familiar with the ear of corn while um, doing some math problems to them. And we're going to look at like averages. We're going to look at percent errors right here. Uh, we're going to look at um, how to accurately, um, or what, how many numbers of things that we need to make an accurate judgment of what we want. So we're looking for accuracy in this as well. And then you kind of get a little uh, fun game where you kind of have the kids guess how many corn, corn kernels are in a container. And then what they're going to do is after they guess, 
then they're going to determine how many corn kernels are on there based on the mass of the kernels. Okay, so that's another really fun game that I think a lot of teachers are kind of familiar with. Uh, think like, um, how do you find out how many you know, jelly beans are in the jar kind of a thing. But we're adding math to it. A little uh, bit of science there. So going through here, uh, you can see that uh, each group, again, gets anywhere from one to six ears of corn, depending on the amount of corn you have and the amount of students that you have. And you want them to count the number of rows on the corn. So they're going to go here. And probably the best way to do is kind of have a kid put their finger on one of those pieces of corn kernels. And then they'll just kind of count all around here. You know, it's easy to get lost. But yeah, they'll kind of count around until they meet their finger again. And they would come in here and they'd say, ear of corn, one. It has 18 rows going around, right? And let's say, actually, they all have 18. Let's just say got all that. Uh, there's always going to be one that's weird, right? We'll do a 20 right there, right? So um, you would ask, do they have the same number of rows, right? So did they have different species of corn, uh, different hybrids? Or, and then um, was it even or odd number of rows, right? So they're kind of looking and doing some qualitative analysis describing the uh, ear of corn. And then you're going to come right down here, total number of kernels. Now what we want to do is we want to count how many of those kernels are in one row, right? So we're going to do this the quick and easy way, right? So we want to count how many kernels are in each row, and then we're going to multiply that by the number of rows. So right, I said my ear of corn has 18 rows. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, and I'm going to pick one line right here, and I'm going to go through a row, and I'm going to count all the kernels in that row. Okay, and I believe it was 36, right? So if I have 18 rows and I have about 36 kernels per row, that gets me about 648 uh, corn kernels, which actually falls into the average, right? We said the average uh, kernels per year of corn is anywhere from six to 800. So yeah, we're looking pretty good right here. So what they'll do is they'll do that for each ear of corn that they have. And again, each kid is doing like their own uh, ear of corn here. So it's not like one kid is doing six of them. You can if you want to do that to them. Uh, they'll, probably, they'll probably love corn after that, right? Even more. Um, so they're looking at the average number of kernels right here. And then we do actually have them count the total number. So not only do you teach them like, hey, this is a quick way to maybe estimate it. Now you're like, well, we got to make sure that we're actually somewhat close, right? So sorry, but you're going to have to count every piece of corn right here. One way to do that, um, if you don't mind uh, kind of coloring your corn a little bit, is they can actually use a pen or pencil and they can actually, or a marker, and they can actually tap each one so they know which ones they counted and which ones they haven't. Uh, with that. So uh, it will be frustrating, but I, I promise you, them counting these corn kernels will be the quietest cl uh, your classroom has ever been, uh, hands down. It's, 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 so if you need a break, just make them count corn kernels, and uh, it'll be great. Let's see. So the next one we have right here is after they kind of explore that ear of corn, uh, we get that fun little activity is where they want to guess how many corn kernels are in this. But like I said, we're going to then determine it actually mathematically. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to end up massing your container on the scale, right? And then you want to get the mass of the empty container. Now you can have a, a same empty container here, or what you could have done is weigh the container first, right? And then just put the, the uh, weight, the mass on the board for them right here. And then they would weigh the container themselves right here. And then um, you would get that total mass of the container. So what we're actually going to do in order to determine the number of corn kernels in here, we're going to do it by mass. And in order to do it by mass, we want to figure out what the mass is per one corn kernel, right? So the thing here, as you can see in this table down below, you're going to actually find the average uh, mass of a corn kernel, but you're going to do it in five different ways, right? You're going to get the mass of just one corn kernel. So if I were to put this on here, I'll actually kind of show this one real fast. There we go, mode. There we go. Uh, yeah, make sure it's on grams, right? Tear it out to zero. And what you're going to do is you're going to get the mass of one kernel. So if you put one kernel on there, you're going to see, right, that the total mass of the kernel or kernels is, in this case, 0.29, right? OK, that's all right. But what happens when you have five, right? Actually, I'm going to do all these 10 right here, right? So I'm going to put 10. Does that change the weight of an individual kernel, right? So if I have my one kernel and it weighed 0.29, I divide that by one to get the average mass of a kernel. It's 0.29 here. But looking at this in grams with my 10, right, I have a total mass of 2.51, 
of 10 corn kernels. So my actual average of my corn kernels are, is 0.251 if I were to divide that by 10. So you can see that there's a little bit difference right here between if I were to take the average of 10 kernels or if I was just to randomly pick one kernel uh, within that. So, um, so right here you'll have the total mass of the kernels in the container and you'll just write that same number all the way through right in here. And then um, what you're going to do is the number of kernels are in the container. So after the kids guess, um, what could actually happen is um, they could actually, you could give them that number and that's what they're shooting for, right? So that's the number they're shooting for. Oh, and that's right here. You get that, my bad, looked at the wrong font. <laughs> so this is, comes from the teacher. This is how many were counted. And believe me, like if you look at this, there's 2,054 corn kernels in this guy right here. So that takes a little bit of time. Again, if you want uh, someone to do this, maybe you have some like TA kids or maybe you have another class that isn't doing this. So you can actually give them uh, this container and break it up and have them count it all for you and then just kind of bring the number. That'll uh, save a lot more time for you right there. Um, so what's going to happen is you actually, through looking at uh, the total mass of the kernels in the container, the number of the kernels in the container, using that average mass, right, you can get uh, uh, that number right here. So then what's going to happen is you're going to determine the percent error, right? So the percent error is just the difference between the number that the kids found uh, that, uh, of kernels in here and the number that the teacher had, the actual number. And you're going to see which one was taking one kernel the most accurate or taking 10, 20, or 50, right, uh, was the most accurate uh, reading in here. So that kind of just shows them um, what you'll kind of get is kind of a little graph kind of thing like this, right? Um, in which, yeah, your least accurate is going to be when you have fewer corn kernels. And then you're going to get more accurate as you, accurate as you um, increase the number of kernels, right? So you get that average kind of goes more to the true average. But there's a point where you don't have to keep adding more and more kernels to that, right? So maybe 10, getting the average of 10 kernels gets you the job done just as easily as 50, and you save a lot more time uh, counting 10 instead of 50. OK. So and this has the whole steps right in, uh, in here, how to, do each, um, how to do each step with that. And then what we're actually going to do is you're going to see um, how many kernels are in a bushel of corn, right? So a bushel of corn is 56 pounds. How many kernels is that? You already determined what the average um, a weight of one kernel is. So if you know the average weight of one kernel, then you can figure out uh, how many kernels are in 56 pounds or a bushel of corn. Um, the next activity is a really fun activity in which you're actually finding the number of corn plants per acre of land. And this is a really cool thing that farmers do just to estimate how many uh, corn plants they have per acre. So you're going to get a piece of masking tape and you're going to uh, put uh, 17 and a half feet of masking tape around your room. And then you're just going to actually put dots on there. So right, you'll have your masking tape and you'll just kind of put dots. Try to do them, uh, each dot consistently around so you can choose five inches, six inches, or even 10 inches, right? And this has uh, your kids go through. And what they do, you figure out, OK, how many inches are in 17 and a half feet, right? What is your foot in inches? So how many of your feet are in that 17 and a half feet? And then you're going to use that to determine uh, the number of corn kernels uh, in that. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to have uh, students pace, right? Uh, um, through that 17 and a half feet, they're going to count the number of corn plants within that 17 and a half feet, and then they're going to multiply that by 1,000. That's it. Again, just walk 17 and a half feet, count the number of plants, multiply by 1,000, and that's a pretty good estimate. Now, if you know how many corn plants you have uh, within an acre, you can actually determine how many corn kernels you have. So again, we could just kind of keep hitting them with the math on here. Um, and then we have some reinforcing review questions like, again, which number of corn kernels came the closest to the actual number, right? So were you more accurate if you did 10, 50, or maybe you were just as accurate doing one? Okay, what was the percent error? And then we have some converting, right, of, of doing some math conversions. But right here at the end is kind of one of my favorite things. Um, you actually have kids determine how many kernels of corn make up their body and actually how many bushels of corn that they are uh, in here. So the average human body contains about 18% carbon. Okay, And out of that, 70% of the carbon in your body comes from corn just because of all uh, the different types of products that corn is in and those products used in the things that we eat. 
So again, 70% of the carbon in our body comes from corn, and we know if 18% of our body is carbon, then we can use that step-by-step -step right here to determine how many corn kernels make up our body, uh, the carbon in our body right here. So kind of a neat, like, kind of relative thing uh, for the students. Okay, or relational thing, I should say. So that's our math right here. Pretty involved, and please don't, don't worry. Like, uh, this does walk you step by step. It walks the kids step through step through that. I know I kind of went through that a little quick, um, but it's not too bad if you follow it step by step. All right, so really the reflection on this one is that we want to know that the average number of corn kernels on an ear of corn is about six to 800 kernels, that we get about 0.28 grams right, uh, per kernel. Um, right here. So how many rows? 16, 18? A lot depends on the hybrid, right, of corn that you use. And that a bushel of corn is 56 pounds. And that uh, how do farmers determine the number of corn plants per acre? And this is kind of a just quick rough estimate uh, with that. Okay. So I'm going to put this off here to the side. All right. So now that we kind of looked and explored an ear of corn, now we're actually going to look at uh, where do we find corn? And that's what uh, a good uh, leading question was on that math concept that we had back in section five, right? Uh, the kids were able to determine how many kernels of corn make up the carbon in their body, right? And that 70% of the carbon in our body comes from corn. So here are the many uses of corn. We have this really cool infographic put out by the National Corn Growers Association that talks about all the different um, things where we find corn and the uses of that corn within those products. Kansas Corn Stem also came up with a list right here as well, uh, talking about like diapers, corn starches used to uh, take in the moisture of diapers right in there, Windex, hand soaps, right, spark plugs. So there's a lot of really cool um, products that we wouldn't think corn is a part of um, and they're put into here. So it's kind of a really cool discovery uh, section right here. So you can give this kid, uh, for your kids to read and then we actually designed a uh, crossword puzzle uh, with that and we, we did multiple ones. I think there's five different crossword puzzles available that you can give your kids uh, that are just asking about the corn products in here. So a good kind of way to make sure that they were reading uh, the material within there or, or even reinforcing the material. So this is a really cool one right here. Uh, again, there's a couple different things that you can do with this as well. Um, yes. So one of the other things that you can do with this is you can even bring uh, all these products from your home or have king kids bring in products from the home uh, that have the different uh, types of corn products in there, right? And if you look right here on the bottom of the sl uh, slide, um, scientific names for things that um, are actually corn. We have sorbitol, melitol, uh, high fructose corn syrup, citric acid, ZMAs, right? That's actually just straight up corn, uh, dextrin, xanthan gum. All those uh, come from corn as a base product. So uh, kids can go around, look at uh, where they find those different types of uh, ingredients and bring those in. And you guys can see all the different types of products. Uh, that they have. Or like I said, you can bring products from home and you can actually have your kids figure out which ones uh, contain corn within that as well. So again, everything from toothpaste to cosmetics, shampoos, perfumes, uh, man, it's everywhere. All right. So we're getting kind of towards the end here. Um, after looking at um, where corn is found in the many different products, we actually have a good um, resource put out by the National Corn Growers Association. Uh, they do this report every year, so they just came out with the 2021 uh, version of this. But anyway, it's this whole bunch of infographics talking about everything of um, breaking down basically what uh, ingredients are in a corn kernel, like the starch and fat content, sugars and things like that, the outer coating, where is it grown, right? What is it used for? Uh, which state produces the most of, of these things? So as you can see, there is just so much uh, information on here and it's put uh, into graphical form. Uh, so what we did is we just created a worksheet that uh, has them go through this and, and actually uh, extract information from this. And this is a huge skill for our kids, uh, whether you're looking for the ACT, SATs, or anything like that, being able to interpret 
uh, information, being able to pull that information out um, and make something useful of it is a huge skill to have, whether it's science or anything else going on. And they do it in really a fun way. Uh, it's very colorful. Uh, no two graphs are the same on this. So it's very kind of, really kind of cool, right? Corn consumption on the food and feed. The corn consumption based on ethanol and who produces the most ethanol with that. So what we actually have right here is a worksheet um, having your kids go through that and teasing out um, that information from the graphs. And sometimes uh, it's, it's something they can pull straight from it. Other times they're gonna actually have to interpret it or they even may have to do calculations uh, based off of the information they have. So it's a very rigorous, um, um, challenging kind of worksheet here, but nothing that, that they couldn't go through. It walks through a lot of this with them. And two, we even provide resources at the end right here on how to determine like percent increases or percentages in general, um, ratios, converting, uh, converting units and how to do conversions, nutritional facts and information. So this one has a lot of really good stuff um, again, being able to extract information from a resource, okay? Um, and what we have right here is the last one, section eight, is our leaf collar method um, dissection right here. So what happens is we've learned about those corn stages, right? So if we kind of look in here, remember we have uh, that nice big uh, infographic poster uh, that shows the growth stages of each plant, okay? We have it in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at the leaf collar method of determin determining what growth stage our plant is in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dissect that plant and, and actually be able to physically determine what stage it is in. So we're going to be able to split a corn stalk down the middle, look at the nodes, right? Be able to look at the root system and the leaves and count the number of collars on the leaves. It's a really fun process. And actually we did do that in our Explore Corn series. And that is a video that we uh, had showing you the dissection. So I'd like to refer to you guys to that um, uh, dissection method there. It's the same process that we have right here. It's really good. Um, and we really hope that you kind of check that one out, right? Uh, that is really helpful in getting uh, kids hands-on um, access to corn plants. And to tell you the truth, farmers are more than willing to. Uh, a local farmer, uh, ask them for how many corn plants that you need. And um, I've never had one say no yet uh, here. So they love the fact that kids get that uh, exposure in the room. And, and they'll even come in and uh, hang out with your kids and actually talk to them about uh, what they do. They'll talk to you about the anatomy and what they, uh, and what they look for in plants as far as diseases and growth stages and stuff like that too. So it's a really cool, um, really cool unit. Again, that is in our Explore Corn series. So that concludes, that concludes this mammoth of a um, unit right here uh, for our uh, cornucopia unit. Again, don't feel you have to do any, uh, everything. That'd be awesome if you did, uh, but pick and choose what works for you. Uh, in here. So um, that it concludes our cornucopia unit. Uh, and if you want to find out more, please go to kansascornstem.com.